an unlawful look at an extraordinary theory of everything? Part C. The meaning of Mona Lisa and of the Vitruvian Man by Leonardo da Vinci. Does the smile of Mona Lisa hide a secret? It certainly does. The smile of Lisa del Giocondo denotes both the curiosity by which we abandon the world known to the autistic facet of the mind and the nostalgia that leads back into the reality of a familiar world. Curiosity in Mona Lisa is equivalent to the morning star, the devilish cunning that fascinates the scholarly Faust, and the going Quetzalcoatl, and nostalgia is equivalent to the evening star, love in the Virgin Mary and in any mother, and the returning Quetzalcoatl. When the grace of Mary steps on the malice of the devil through seeing, or her love for Rama helps Sita evade the advances of the devilish Ravana, when we win over our desire of total victory through will, or when Rama saves Sita, then the smile of Mona Lisa helps Quetzalcoatl return into the progress of all. In our curious going, and in our nostalgia returning, the two bridges that cross the sea of quantum computing sustain the simultaneous embrace of order and disorder by our artistic facet. Only an infinite speed allows us to sustain the blow of the quantum sword that cuts our mind in two, while we face a problem on the bridge of coherence between the earth and the sky. On the one hand, the curious smile of Mona Lisa hides the ubiquity of whoever walks on opposite words at once, on the bridge of quantum coherence. On the other hand, the nostalgic smile of Mona Lisa leads to the coincidence of the visionary who harmonizes diametral words at the beginning of the bridge of the coherence, the gracious dance of infinity with nothingness, or ubiquity with coincidence, in the eye of a quantum hurricane, makes our humanistic dreams come true. In 1950, Nat King Cole sang in Mona Lisa. Many dreams have been brought to your doorstep. Hope in Nat King Cole led him to seeing and will, in which the smile of Mona Lisa reflects the dream of creation, or the complementarity between classical and quantum computing in a renovated world. There is only classical need, and not quantum hope, vision or will, in the 8 minutes 17 seconds used by a photon going from the sun to the earth. When subluminal radiance in the relativistic space-time illuminated by the funny speed of photons of light embrace the superluminal tachyons darkened by the infinite speed of virtual photons in the hyperspace of quantum computing and partners embrace super partners, then the first attention will join the second attention in the rise of the third attention, the return of Quetzalcoatl and the final flight of Clint Eastwood from Alcatraz. Beyond the dramatic art of Clint Eastwood, do you know of other artworks by Leonardo about creative flight? In the drawing called Vitruvian Man, Leonardo explained around 1490 how the human mind leaves behind the most abject prison. His imagination and sweat leaned on the imagination and sweat of others. In the year 1414, the humanist Poggio Bracciolini found in the Abbey of Monte Cassino a copy of De Architettura about architecture by the Roman Marcus Vitruvius Pollio. About 80 years later, the literate Francesco Di Giorgio impressed the illiterate Leonardo with Vitruvius idea that the link between the circle and the square concealed the secret of the symmetry of the universe. Leonardo was impressed by the fact that Vitruvius too had earned his pension as a military engineer to Julius Caesar and Octavian Augustus. In 52 before the common era, Vitruvius designed the ring between the circumvallation 
and the controlation around the city of Alesia, Alice saint rennes in France. The two walls protected Julius Caesar from the circular strategy of Vercingetorix trapped in Alesia and the square strategy of his Celtic cousin Vercasivalaunus after his arrival from Arvernia. Vitruvius most probably designed the lethal weapons by which Caesar dismembered thousand Celts. Leonardo accepted Vitruvius' conclusion that the symmetry of the human body evokes the mysterious bond between the circle and the square, but he concluded that the two geometrical forms could not share the same center. Leonardo could not square the circle by using a visible straight edge and compass. However, he saw that the invisible crossing of infinity when nothing is in the eye of a quantum hurricane can unite the circle with the square. In pursuing the crossing of infinity with nothingness, he centered the circle or the autistic facet of human beings in the navel of the Vitruvian man and the square or the schizophrenic facet of humans in the vertex of the triangle under the twin reservoirs of his genetic inheritance. The way in which infinity in the second attention embraces the circle and the square of the first attention, however, has remained imprisoned in a deep mystery. Can you explain the mystery of the Vitruvian men? Leonardo's decision to separate the circle from the square in his drawing Vitruvian men implies the four moments of creation. If you help me represent the Vitruvian man, I can show you my hypothesis about Leonardo's view of the strange relationship among the circle of sanity, the square of madness, the ambiguity attached to any problem, and the finding of a new piece of knowledge. How can I represent the Vitruvian man? Do this. Place your right foot on the bench at my left, and your left foot on the bench at my right. Rise your extended arms and level the tip of your hands with the roots of your hair. Let us go back to the drawing of the Vitruvian man. Imagine now that your open legs rest on the lower half of a circle, one one, while the middle fingers of your extended hands touch the higher half of the same circle, one one. Also imagine that, besides touching the circle, your fingers touch the upper corner of a square in 1-1. One one. Notice that the low side of the square sustains the two benches you are stepping on, whereas the upper side of the square touches the top of your hair. At this point, your elevated arms in 1-1 one one and your open legs in 1-1 one one make the avatar X of the Vitruvian man. Let us see now another facet of the Vitruvian man. Your extended arms are getting heavy. You may lower them at the level of your shoulders, touching the two sides of the square with your middle fingers. In two, two. Recall that your hands left the circle when you lower them along the sides of the square. As you see, your feet keep stepping on the circle sustained by the two benches located on the bottom of the square. In touching the upper part of the two sides of the square, your horizontal arms represent now the crest of a mountain, two two, and your open legs, which rest on the lower part of the circle in two two, enclose the silhouette of a mountain. You are halfway between the circle and the square. You are the avatar mountain of the Vitruvian man. Let us see the third facet of human beings. Keeping your arms horizontal, you may come down from the two benches and reunite your feet on the floor, minus one, minus one. Your extended arms touch the sides of the square, into two and minus one, minus one. And you reunite the legs, rest on both the circle and the square, in minus one, minus one. You have become the cross of madness located mainly in the square, minus one, minus one. We lack only the last avatar of the Vitruvian man. That emanation comes in 
when you rise again your arms and hands, touching both the circle and the upper vertices of the square in tree tree. At the same time, keep your feet united while touching both the bottom of the circle and the square, tree tree. Your body has joined simultaneously the circle and the square in tree tree. You resemble now the Olmec Eagle of the universe. The fourth avatar of the Vitruvian man is equivalent to the eagle described in the books written by the anthropologist Carlos Castaneda about the teachings of Don Juan. What is the cognitive meaning of the four avatars of the Vitruvian man? In the Vitruvian man, the X in the ones is a metaphor for the personal and shared knowledge adored by autistics and by the autistic facet of the human mind. The X also stands for the circle of classic computing, Earth, and the quartal serpent of the Aztecs. The mountain in the twos, between the circle and the square, is a metaphor for the bridge of quantum coherence and for Quetzalcoatl's going voyage from the circle of the quartal yes on Earth to the square of the Quetzal no on Venus. The cross in the minus ones represents the schizophrenic square of the Quetzal bird, that is, the paradise hell of zero void, in which we find new humanistic treasures by listening to the creative ideas of Coatlicue, the Virgin Guadalupe Gabriel, or we find new ways to destroy the world by listening to the devil. Finally, the eagle in the trees is a metaphor for the change of the zero vacuum into the transcendental zero of a super void in a true democracy, or for the cognitive and social miracle by which Quetzalcoatl returns from the square of Quetzal madness into the circle of Quetzal sanity with the revelation of a secret that improves the lives of all. In the 2006 World Soccer Cup, for example, the square of the Italian Marco Materazzi threw a bitter insult into the circle of the French Sinatine Zidane, and the square of Zidane placed a powerful headbutt to the circle of Materazzi. In my view, Zidane implemented then and there a humanistic feat. By replacing egoism with respect in the first attention, and malice with grace in the second attention, he confined madness and landed into the third attention. By hitting back the humanity of Materazzi, Zidane reached the crossing of infinity and nothingness in the eye of the quantum hurricane. That cosmic supervoid, or the third point below the navel of the Vitruvian man, transformed Zidane into a mage. As with Zidane, our Quetzalcoatl mountain should lean intuitively on the grace of the Great Mother, Shekinah, or the Archangel Gabriel, in order to reach the third point under our navel. Any prince and any person may reach the third point by winning not with his friends, but with his enemies, without leaning on the malice exalted by Niccolò Machiavelli in the 16th century. However, in the eye of the quantum hurricane, an encounter with the malice of the devil may occur. Leonardo, for example, invented new weapons under the spell of the devil and painted La Natività under the enchantment of Gabriel.